you kind of take us through that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so uh, I've kind of been all over the mound through my career in the professional leagues. Um, I moved over to first base side because I'm a, my four seam tends to rise, good vertical break, so it's easier for me to get glove side. But uh, during spring training, it was kind of a struggle to, you know, get swing and miss and, you know, get the balls and the, the balls that were hit uh, to slow them down, essentially. Um, so we moved over um, late into spring training. It was effective that day, but I think my body had to adjust. So I think the first, you know, two or three weeks of the season, I was just kind of getting used to, you know, how my ball's moving, where I need to locate, you know, just get my eyesight's right. And, you know, the last, I would say, four or five innings, games at least, have been really effective, good swing and miss, and, you know, just location command-wise has been great. So we know you've done it before in the minor leagues. Were there any extra emotions yesterday as far as closing out that game? And, and did you guys get that baseball back? <laughs> Uh, obviously, a lot of motion. Uh, you know, getting a win in the big leagues is hard. Getting a save in the big leagues is really hard. Um, you know, I just wanted to go out there and win. You know, uh, I think anything I try to do is to make this team win. That's the best chance. And uh, that ball is long gone. But we got a replica. We, we got a replica ball. <laughs> it should should be good enough. You know. Hold that over Joey's head for I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sam. Uh, good, good launch angle out of his hand. Um, you know, after that great play, he wanted to give it to a fan and let him, let him have some fun with it. Uh, what do you think of coming in to get a save with the runner on second? Is that a, a little extra tough? Uh, it's obviously challenging, but, you know, uh, everybody has to do it, so it's a level playing field. Uh, I mean, I had the same experience the last time I pitched against the Red Sox. Guy hit a leadoff double, and kind of knew what I had to do differently to not give that run up so easily. Uh, so, you know, at least I was, uh, I had some prior practice, so it was nice. But uh, uh, it helped that, you know, Cruz isn't exactly the fastest runner in the world. So worrying about holding him on wasn't a big worry of mine. And it was just a little roster crunch, obviously, early on in the season. But, you, you know, you were optioned. And I wonder if, it, you know, if you felt more kind of coming back and getting another chance and feeling you know, like you maybe had a chip on your shoulder because of that. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to make it a point that, you know, if I play well, there's there's no way they're going to call me down, and that's all I've been thinking about is just try to go out there, dominate, and, you know, the, the pieces will fall in place. But, you know, I'm doing my part, and that's what's important. Thanks, Josh. Jared. Hi, uh, Josh, I'm curious. Your fastball metrics are among the best in the league. Um, is that, especially, like, the rise and stuff, is that – that you've naturally been good at or you've worked at it with all the data that you guys get these days? What, I, I guess what's your uh, dynamic relationship with the fastball? Uh, so I kind of naturally had it. I didn't know I had it until I you know, arrived with the Dodgers. Sure. But uh, uh, it started getting better each year. And then this last year, we, I took a real deep dive into metrics and just kind of understanding you know, ball flight. You know, how can I create more spin, more efficiency? And uh, it's kind of just kind of come around full circle finally, where, you know, I can make small adjustments to make the ball move the proper way that I need it to. Um, but I would say I have some natural talent, but a lot of it's been just kind of hard work and paying attention to the numbers and just learning as much as you possibly can. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Emily. Off of each other and your uh, a lot. I mean, uh, you know, everybody besides the first series, you know, we've been pretty strong. Uh, I mean, obviously they made a, a group, a bullpen that's very talented and young. But uh, I think, you know, the last week or two, we've been just kind of piggybacking off each other. No one's, you know, leaving a mess for anybody else. And we've been just picking each other up and winning games. I think most of us keep it pretty light, um, but uh, Ian Kennedy and uh, Drew Butera are great guys to be around. They're also they're light, but you know they turn it on when they need to. Um, it's been great having those two guys around, just kind of you know them telling stories or you know how they would do things and just the way they act. You learn a lot from those guys. Thank you, dear. Yep, Jeff. Speaking of Ian Kennedy, um, 
coolest guy down there, tons of experience. How much are you picking his brain? Uh, I pick it a lot, but you know, most of the time I just watch. I watch how he carries himself, how he warms up, how he throws. You know, the things that are important to him. You know, he's done it for a really long time, and you know, just honestly paying attention to his tendencies, how he goes about his business is the stuff that I look for because, you know, doing it for, what, 13 years, he's doing a lot of stuff right, and, you know, he shows it every day, the way he comes to the field, the way he's ready. Thank you. Sarah. Hey there. So I just kind of wanted to ask, you know, we've talked a lot about just um, opportunity being kind of the key focal point for this team sometimes just with the amount of youth there is. Out of curiosity, just knowing your your run with the Dodgers in 2020, um, have you had any conversations with Nate Lowe about kind of the same situation where you were with the team but not really able to participate and kind of put that chip on your shoulder about taking opportunity? Uh, yeah, you know, that, that opportunity sailed, <laughs> obviously. But, uh, you know, it's great ha having a chance to actually, you know, establish yourself here. You know, that's the hardest part with those two teams is they're really good. They want to win every single game. So there's no time to truly develop. But, you know, uh, it is hard. But, you know, I think that's what makes us tougher. It builds a little grit in both of us is, you know, we've seen both sides. And, you know, we're not really going to let this opportunity go as easily, I think. You just being grateful for, you know, this team kind of being able to give you that opportunity. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about being a part of this organization so far? It's awesome. Uh, they've done a great job. You know, the the front office, the R&D groups have, you know, taught me a lot of things, a lot of different things that, you know, the Dodgers didn't necessarily teach. Uh, they taught me, but, you know, in a different way. And uh, it's been really fun. and. Uh, you know, they're just kind of open to the way I see things and, you know, how I can adjust better. And it's been a nice, pretty chill <laughs> um, group of guys, and it's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. And lastly, I'm going to sneak this one in because we're really close to Mother's Day. I understand that your wife's expecting. Can you just talk about Mother's Day and what that means to you and uh, how excited you are uh, about that, celebrating that with her? Yeah. Uh, so, we actually, I went to my uh, first doctor's appointment with her today. Uh, it was really exciting. You know, I've never seen anything like it. But uh, actually, we're going Mother's Day shopping tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what to get, but I'm super excited. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, I can't really mess it up with uh, her picking out the gift. <laughs> That's very true. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. John Ronigan. Hey, Josh. Uh, when you say you, you took a deep dive into metrics, into fastball metrics, what did that look like? Was it, was it just going online and uh yeah it started with talking to guys and then you know when you watch you start watching a lot of games and you start looking at guys with essentially invisible fastballs where they just throw in the middle of the zone no one ever hits it you know kind of like Hendrix or Bueller or you know even Kennedy and you start to see where these numbers align you get some depth of you know what these numbers mean, and then you start to see what numbers they have, and then you can kind of compare yourself. And then, uh, you know, I, I understand most of it, but like when you can get live data, live feedback, and you can make these adjustments, that pitch uh, in a bullpen, let's say, it just makes things go by faster and you can approach it easier, I guess, and it's a day-by-day -day thing and not, you know, I don't, I, I threw five days ago and I just figured it out. You know, it's, you can take things right on and do it immediately after. Anything that was like a big revelation through this deep dive? Was there one thing that you really took from it and it sort of it turned the light bulb on for you? Uh, for me, it was making sure that my mechanics were right. Honestly, uh, I think the few years with the Dodgers, I was kind of hurt. And my slot, and my arm started to change. And so it was in a spot where it wasn't efficient. And once I kind of got my body lined up, the spin actually started to increase naturally. So once that got in line, the adjustments became, they, they stuck more because, you know, I wasn't trying to find something bigger. Uh, so it's been more of just maintaining my slot, keeping it in a good place where my arm feels good, and that way it can work as efficiently as possible. Okay, then nothing else. We'll let Josh go, and we'll have Woody in here next. Thank you. Thank you, guys.